Did you wake up today thinking that you're going to be hearing the word Voronoi a million times? I'm guessing the answer is no. So come on, let's tessellate some cells the easy way today. Hi Ravi, how are you doing? Hey RK, what's up? You're looking extra smart, man. <laughs> oh, that's uh, yeah. shave. The shave Change. and everything. I, uh, yeah. Much. So, so what are we doing? Are we planning to complete the ants today? Uh, that's a good question, man. Actually, we have a couple of unfinished projects and all uh, mm -hmm. going on, right? I mean, yeah. we, um, uh, we have that traffic simulation that is still unfinished because we were stuck with the pathfinding algorithm. Correct. Uh, so we'll, we'll get to that definitely. And we're also stuck on that ants uh, simulation. Like I said, I mean, uh, this isn't my main job. This, I mean, I have, a, uh, I have a main job. And uh, that is it's taking up much more than, uh, you know, what I'm able to, I'm not able to give 100% uh, to this, but hopefully I do find some time at some point in time. I do wish to actually see it complete. You, you, yeah, you want an extended period of time to think through the to thi yeah, thing. To it's think not just it. something you can on the fly just on the write. Fly, yeah, mm. uh, like what we are going to do today. Ah. I thought that Voronoi tessellation is an easy enough subject. Actually, it's not that easy enough, but... Um, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll learn about so, this. Yeah. yeah, the canvas and its things you're, you're like very, ex you're a big expert on, right? So scientific simulations in on using the HTML yeah. canvas. Yeah, right? sure. That's I mean, your I, at least I'd like to be where you think I am, but I'm not, I can tell you that much. <laughs> I think you are at that uh, level where you yeah. can do these simulations very easily yeah. on um, the canvas, which I noticed that you made a new intro video of the channel where yes. you stitched a few of the yes. uh, outputs. You know, we, we started results. off with our introduction, right, right, which is over, so yeah, well. yeah. and then we put in that Ramanujam spy, uh, the Ramanujam pie episode, you mm. know, um, as a stopgap. Right. And then finally, last week, because I didn't have anything to think this about. This was a nice one, I, I thought. thought. I'll, it I'll, looks I'll nice, that. sounds yeah. nice. Like a proper yeah. introduction video. Sure, right? yeah, yeah, it is, it is. All right. It's a highlights reel. If yeah. you want, yeah. So, uh, so today's episode would be that Voronoi tessellation, uh -huh, and uh -huh. it's uh, 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 you know it's one of those things that is actually very complicated to simulate. Mm -hmm. But I think I have an easier way to do it. Got uh, it. To, to tessellate cells into mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, you know uh, into into Voronoi cells or something, or to divide a canvas into Voronoi cells. Correct. You know, uh, I think we've been talking too much about it. Yeah. Let's just let's open that presentation and uh, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. Do you know what this is? It looks like uh, Chennai. Yeah, this is actually Chennai. Uh, it looks a lot like Tamil Nadu, but it's not. Yeah, it's yeah actually it looks Chennai. a bit yeah. like Tamil Nadu yeah, also. But it's yeah. actually Chennai and all of its suburbs and everything. Mm -hmm. I believe this would be like where the port is. Mm. And this is where we are. And this is where I live. Uh, sure. Call it. Right. So, so let's assume that we have a map, uh, you know, uh, with uh, we have a map with all of these hospitals that are marked. Mm. And let's say that these are the only government hospitals. Sure. Or whatever. They're sure. There are hundreds of private hospitals, but right. let's just say that these are like the big okay. government hospitals okay. or whatever. Okay. All right. And uh, let's assume that you are somebody who is over here, mm. you know, marked mm. in blue, mm. which, I mean, if you had to go, let's say, get a vaccination, mm. which, which hospital would you go? Would mm. you go to this one or would you go to this one? Correct. That's right. the question. That's a, that. That's the question over here. Mm. One way to actually find out which is the, uh, the closest point to you mm. is to divide this map or to tessellate this map into these cells, all right? Now let's take this uh, area, for example, this area or uh, uh, this, uh, all right, let's take this one because I know what color this is. This is pink. All of these pink ones, right? You treat them essentially as uh, points and these points are closest to the red dot here. over here. Right. All right, and so on and so forth. So for example, this, blue point over here is closest to this red point. Whereas right. if you cross over just a little bit, it's closer over here Got it. and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So if you keep doing this one, right, you'll reach something called as a tessellation. Mm. Now, believe it or not, we have actually been seeing tessellations in nature without even realizing that this is what it is. Th mm -hmm. that it's, uh, that it's, uh, there is some sort of algorithm that determines how, uh, you know, these tessellations happen. We'll, we'll get to that in just a moment, but mm. let's just see what Voronoi cells are. Mm. Okay. So this is a typical Voronoi diagram mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a partition of a plane into mm. regions close to each 
um, close to each of a given set of objects. So let's say these black dots are the objects. Mm. So we have divided this plane in mm. such a way that each one of these points with mm. let's say this purple area. Yeah, right. Everything in this purple area is closest to this one. Sure. Whereas if you cross the border over here, mm. everything over here is closest to this dot. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Uh -huh. For each point, there is a corresponding region called as a Voronoi cell. And it consists of all the points of the plane mm. closer to that seed than any other. So, mm. you know, everything in this green area is closest to this than anything else. So, for example, an election booth is there yes. and then there is a, a area where... Wonderful. That's actually, mm. a, uh, that's actually a wonderful example. That could be one. Yeah. I, I wonder if they use this to mm. use these kind of Voronoi cells. Right. Uh, they probably also... Uh, consider the the population the population. whereas this is just a geography this is just a geography right yes right, that's right. correct all right now this Warrenai tessellation has many names it was first invented or uh, you know it's named after jo georgie Warrenai and uh, it has many names it's called Warrenai tessellation i like that one because i think tessellation is like a nice neat uh, new name. science fiction -y name if yeah, you yeah, ask yeah, me yeah, yeah. Uh, it's called Warrenai decomposition partition or even a dirichlet tessellation all right because it's named after another inventor i think they were all uh, basically at the same time they've invented sure. it sure now remember how i told you that this is you see this actually a lot of times in nature all right so these are soap bubbles oh, and if you okay. have many soap bubbles ah. in a single point ah. they will automatically tessellate themselves in ah. such a way ah. that these bubbles conserve the most energy or ah. are uh, they, they, the surface area is like the least ah. to, to the most strength when you do that it automatically forms this oh it's a this is a photograph of my knuckle actually ah. you ha you all actually we all actually have this mm. anywhere there is like a joint or something so you can actually check your mm -hmm. joint there is mm -hmm. there is a there is a tessellation yeah ah. it's difficult to okay. see okay okay but you can see definitely anywhere there is a fold in your skin or okay. any place okay. you will see a tessellation happen mm. Mm. Okay. Right. okay now there are many different logics or many different um, complex ways of doing it complex mm. but fast mm. all right what i'm going to do over here is slow but it's actually very easy to understand mm. all right so let's mm. get to that okay so what we'll do is we'll place these objects randomly on the canvas mm. and each one of these objects carries with it just one property and mm. that property is color ah. so every point that you see has its own internal color variable Got so it. we'll just do that okay next what we'll do is we'll start filling this canvas or um, you know i forgot to draw a border but we'll start filling this canvas with ellipses like this hmm. now these ellipses will what we'll do is we'll try to find out you know how close this to a, one of these to points. one of these points and whatever point is the closest, we'll draw that ellipse with, with that, that color, color, with that, mm. you know, mm. uh, behind the scenes color that it has. Yes. Now, once you do that, you'll find that it will sort of lo start looking like this one. Super. That's the aim of today's episode. Excellent. You want to get started? Absolutely. All right. Let's get started. Our index.html is pretty straightforward. It only has what it needs to have, namely the canvas element. In this case, the canvas element is 1000 by 800 pixels in size. It is also centered on the screen. As of now, we are already including the Voronoi.js file that will be used to tessellate our canvas into Voronoi cells. If you are a regular viewer, then you'd already know that we don't use any JavaScript frameworks or anything like that. The code that we type during the episode is executable right out of GitHub on a JavaScript enabled browser. The only exception to this is a file called codespace api.js, which has a bunch of classes, methods, and constants that we regularly use. All right, on to Voronoi.js. As of now, this JavaScript only has two functions a window load event manager that primes the context out of the JavaScript can canvas, like so. Once all the variables are primed and ready, it calls a function called tessellate, which will then go on to perform the Voronoi tessellation. Unlike a lot of our episodes, this is not looped because there won't be any animation involved in this week. We'll start by creating our own Voronoi point class. This class will have two properties. A point that we will expect as parameter to the only constructor of this class. And second, a random color. 
A random color is created by generating random numbers between 50 and 255 and creating a HTML canvas color format out of the resultant random numbers. Now these random numbers are generated for each component of the color, red, green, and blue. And finally, let's also include this Voronoi point class in our main HTML file. Let's start using the Voronoi point class. We'll declare two variables, one to hold the initial number of points, in this case 25, and next an array to hold these points. We'll use our favorite for loop to create our Voronoi points and push them into this array. Finally, let's use a for each loop to go through the Voronoi point array and put the points on the screen. All right, so I've corrected for a small mistake over here. Instead of using the for in loop, I've changed this to the for each loop, but otherwise everything else remains the same. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. Our random points are now generated and are spread across the screen. Now let's try and tessellate this using our algorithm that we discussed earlier. We'll start by declaring a constant called gap. This will be used to create the points on the canvas. In the tessellate function, we'll loop through every point on the canvas and find out how far away it is from the Voronoi points. We'll do this using a function called getCloseStVoronoi point. We'll define this function in just a bit. Once the closest point is discovered, we'll color the ellipse using the color property of the Voronoi point and put it on the canvas. The get closest Voronoi point takes in an X and Y coordinate and loops through all the Voronoi points and finds the distance between the X and Y and the Voronoi point. Now I'm using a function here called get distance no square root. This simply calculates the distance without using the square root function since the square root is so expensive on the CPU. Once the closest distance is found, we can then return it. All right, with that being done, let's look at the results. Uh, you can see the tessellations that have happened. Uh, you, can, you can see how it has divided it into cells, right? So if you take this dot, for example, all of these green points over here are the ones that are closest to this dot, to this black dot, all right? So that's the way Voronoi tessellation works. Let's do one more thing before we, uh, before we go on to look at the results with Ravi. Let's add a mouse event to this canvas so that if I click it, a new point is generated and the screen is tessellated once again. We'll add the click event to the canvas like so and we'll use a custom function called get real mouse position that returns a point on the canvas where the mouse is clicked. On this location, we'll simply construct a new Voronoi point, push it into the array and call the tessellate function. All right, let's look at the results of that. I'll refresh the screen. The cells are already tessellated, but let's try adding a new point. All right, so when I add new points, you'll see that the tessellation happens again and new cells are uh, and new cells are created or tessellated or dissected, one of those things, all right? You'll also notice that it's not the fastest, um, it's not the fastest canvas for, you know, in experience wise. So let's just make sure that it's a little bit fast and uh, we'll make this gap size as four so that only once every four pixels we, try and tessellate it. Now it does look a little bit jagged and it's not as smooth as we expect, but at least it'll be a lot faster. Now, as we discussed earlier, there are better, faster uh, methods to actually do this, to perform this kind of tessellation. We'll revisit that at a later point in time, but for now, let's look at the results with Ravi. All right, Ravi, you ready to see the results? Uh -huh. All right. So, I mean, I've, of course, already loaded it on the screen, right. but I have drawn these black dots randomly on the screen uh -huh. and, uh -huh. you know, also the ellipses. And you can see, uh, you know, if I, I, I am able to add new oh, dots yeah. on yeah, the screen yeah. with the click of a mouse uh -huh. and then I call the tessellation. So, which basically, you know, reforms these borders into, into these cells. Very nice. So, this gray, all of these gray items over here, they are the closest to this right, point right, right. and so on and so forth. You can like tessellate it as much as you want and uh, it will it will, uh, it will tessellate it as wow. as you expect it to uh, do uh, uh, and and of course you get the sense that this is not the fastest that it can be uh, but of course there is uh, there are other algorithms that we will revisit at a later point in time and uh, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. 
uh, you know what do you say man very you cool know, yeah very cool and and we will definitely revisit the faster algorithms that will allow us to move our mouse and then it will automatically reprocess the entire thing and it uses that delaunay triangulation and everything that we just studied before we did that before deciding upon this uh, mm. easier mm. approach to so to i also s- you were showing me that wiki page right which yeah. had lot of um applications or lot of applications yeah that's correct let's um, i i was just uh, just uh, this struck me yeah. whether those you know those uh, glass work on those church uh, wall gla- windows remember uh, are they also tessellations I mean, oh that's a good question i'm i'm not sure i'm not entirely sure they, they also have these polygon shapes right but yeah. they're not maybe they're not um maybe they are more regular right and i was seeing right one of these ashers work because i love ashers work mm-hmm. and this wikipedia was saying that asher was uh, a very uh, inspired by uh, tessellations oh okay yeah uh, mc asher very nice so all these are applications all these the are essentially applications amazing yeah, so amazing. the waronoi diagram is on wikipedia also you can basically look it up i like we'll, oh, we'll put a link like to the ecology yeah. astrophysics what not right yeah, what so not. amazing it's it's everywhere you mm. know that's the thing about this world you know there are yeah humanity has branched out into so many different sciences we just simply not aware of the depth into the knowledge that we've gone mm-hmm. you know which makes it m- even more important to s- to save civilization mm. you know because look at how many how i mean if if somebody forgot to Or, or somebody deleted this Wikipedia page, mm. or deleted all references to to Waronoi. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll take us such a long time to bring yeah, that man. knowledge yeah, back sure, up. Sure, you sure. know, yeah. which is why I mean, I I th- I, th- I think it's very important that we keep this knowledge alive at mm. least to uh, you know uh, through through YouTube and Wikipedia and all of Absolutely. those things. You know, it's very important to visit these things at least mm. know about these things that people are working on this. there are entire doctorates and phd's that have yep. been completed on just this one subject and one dissertation sure very interesting yep. right it mm-hmm. has it has so many applications mm. all right and on that note i think we'll just end this episode sure. uh, join us again next week um and uh, we'll see what we can come up with uh, next week all right if you have any any ideas or anything just put put your comments down below we'll work on that and we'll make it a presentable we'll make it in a presentable format and we'll make an episode out of that all right thank you so much Ciao. Uh, do subscribe and uh, see you again next week bye